this room breaks each OWASP topic down. So if you don't know about this, it's the Open Web Application Security Project. This is talking about injection, so SQL injection here, authentication, uh, sensitive data, and the rest of these. So it says the rooms have been designed. Okay, so maybe this one may be a bit easier for us. So accessing machines. So injection flaws are common. Um, if an attacker is able to successfully uh, pass input that is interpreted correctly, they would be able to do the following. Okay, yeah, so we've done things like this where we access databases. Uh, they could grab sensitive information, personal details. Okay, so dangerous characters. All right, so I think we kind of, we kind of understand how some of this may go right here. Okay, so this is command injection occurs when server-side code is called on a hosting machine. It's a web vulnerability. So we're not gonna need to answer anything there. Let's go to the next one and let's see if we get into actually start doing something. Ooh, yes, we do. So what is active command injection? Evil Corp has started development on a web-based shell, okay. Uh, it's nowhere near finished, but contains the same command injection vulnerability as before. But this time, the response from the system call can be seen on the page. They'll never learn. If it is, then the variable gets passed. Okay? It tries, uh, the program then goes into a try block to execute it. You can read the docs on pass through on the PHP website. But basically, anything you put inside of it, it's going to use it. So uh, ways to detect through the pass-through. Yep, there's some of the Linux commands. What strange text file is in the website's root? We could go ls-l here, and we can go submit. So we have like WWL data is in here. Dr. Pepper.txt is probably going to be the one it's looking for. Is everybody good? So basically, we were able... To we, you know, just like the instructions were saying, you know, you could type anything in here and it's going to return back. Um, so like W, remember we've done W before. And so like with W, it tells you, you know, who's logged in to a new tab here, like W. We could have limited it a bit by just targeting down just a text file um, instead of displaying everything. And then we would have gotten a little bit cleaner way to have looked at what the uh, answer was there. Here is the very first one. <laughs> How many non-root, non-service users are there? Okay, okay, okay. CD. Um, this time we're just going to type in the word home. And after that, you'd probably run like an ls-l here, right? So the semicolon will break it apart. It did not find anything there. Well, let's come back in here. Let's just go cat, Etsy, password. A bunch of these right here are services. So like login information, uh, no login, uh, games. I'm mean, actually, I don't think I've ever looked at this one before. User games. Um, there's the man page here. There's mail servers. There's news. There's login. Uh, more var to just hold up our, our user, list users, nobody, uh, and then management stuff. Okay, so most of these do, they most of these will look like they would fall in that bucket there. Um, but I think we'll take the win here because um, uh, it looks like these are going to be, you know, these would not be included in this because it's looking for non-root and also we know that the answer is one digit because it just has the one asterisk. So let's try it. Okay. All right. So what user is this app running as? And so coming back over and looking at this, uh, we could probably just take that who am I if we wanted to. So uh, let's go to this tab. Who am I? And let's do a submit here. And this is running as www data. So it should be able to come right in here. And I think I've got a space at the end of it that I got to remove. And we're going to go submit and another one. Got it. All right. So what is the shell? What is the user shell set at? Cat 
Etsy password, which is what we did before. Add another S in here. Let's we'll see, is this, how I many more is there than this? Oh, there's only just these few here. So there is a bin, S bin. So it's probably this one right here. What version of Ubuntu is running? But um, you are very correct there. So uh, for dark, uh, there we go. We've got, this is my local machine. Still running Kali Linux, and from what I can gather, we're going to be getting a new Kali uh, 2021.1 release coming up in about a week and a half. Okay, so they're running 1804.4. Okay, we're going to submit that one. And print out the message of the day. Ooh, look right here. Hey, right here it is. Since it was in that help thing, it's probably correct. Okay. All right. So down here at the bottom of this, it does say Dr. Pepper. So broken authentication. Authentication and session management constitutes core components. Authentication allows users to gain access to web apps. Uh, find flaws in the authentication mechanism, they would successfully gain access to others' users' accounts. Okay, brute force, weak credentials, session cookies. I think we got it. Let's go and see how we can start doing some of this stuff in, uh, in real life. Uh, we'll be looking at a logic flaw within the authentication mechanism. A lot of times what happens, developers forget to sanitize the input, uh, which makes them open to attacks like SQL injection. Uh, machine IP. Okay, you'll be able to register a user and try to register Darren. It already exists, so we're going to add a space in front of it. Um, and then we get the flag. Now we need to do the same trick and see if you can log in as author. Let's come back over here now. Let's see if we can take this account. Uh, we're going to register an account here. This one is going to be the space in front of it, uh, Darren. Uh, email. Uh, and then we're going to log in. Oh, I think it's already got that. Sign in. Okay. So we're logged in now as Darren. And here is the key, and let's use that one. It says do the same trick with author. Coming back over here, let's go with the space. Um, that's fine, we'll use my email again. All right. So there's the key. Let's see. I think this should be the same thing. And here we go. Okay, so the most common way to store a large amount of data is using something like structured query language. In a production environment, it is common to see databases set up on dedicated servers. What? People do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do. Okay, we managed to download a database. So they came in here, and there's an example.db here. Okay, so we've got a customer. Yep, the name, credit card, and there again, there's the password hash. Okay, so we understand. Hey, that's how we would work with uh, SQL. Uh, that's how we would work with these SQL databases. And in my previous task, we saw how to query a SQLite database for sensitive information. We found a collection of password hashes. Uh, yeah, I'd like to be, learn a little bit more about that. Okay, so we think we can do that. We're ready now into practice. Have a look around the web app. The developer has left themselves a note indicating their specific data in a specific directory. Ooh. So welcome to Sense and Sensitivity. Okay, so there is a login form here, a username and a password here. 
log in here. Let's see what we've got in this one. Remember to do something better with the database than store it in slash assets. Okay. Don't tell me you did this. Assets. Okay, at least it's stopping us right there, right? Okay, so the directory that they mentioned here was in the format of ASSETS. Okay, so I did not need that slash at the end there. It says, navigate to the directory you found in question one. What, stand, what file stands out as being likely to contain sensitive data? Cool, 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 cool. So this was assets. And actually, I think what we would want, we want to go with this right here. That was a very challenging one. All right. Use the supporting material to access the sensitive data. What is the password hash of the admin user? So uh, can we download this? <gasps> we can. Where are we going to save it? We're going to save it in our junky, junky folder of just CD downloads. So dot tables here. Ooh, we've got two tables. We've got a sessions and we've got a users. All right, so we've got a users table here. And if I wanted to, I may type in this so let's do that let's go right here okay so we have got an admin we've got bob and then we've got alice would it be this one uh what is the admin's plain text password that's where we're going to use crack station which you already had opened up here before I am not a robot and we're going to select crack and the result is going to be, it's just an MD5 hash. Uh, so QWERTY, Y-U-I-O-P and there we go. Boom. And log in as the admin. So let's go back. We're going to go admin and we're going to punch in that password there. And don't save. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think, I think that we've got ourselves another flag here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this next one here is XML uh, external entity. So it says here an XML external identity. XXE is a vulnerability which abuses features of XML parsers. Could you use XXE to perform server-side request forgery, including the web application to make requests? All right, there's two of these. There's an OOB XXE, and there is that's in-band, and then there's an out-of-band. Okay. Okay, so let's go into the next one here. So we have got, before we move on, We'll have to understand it properly. What's XML? XML, extensible markup language. I think we might have all used it. Basically, it looks like this little tag right here. Um, and then inside of it, you can have like a, uh, a main kind of like root element. This one's going to be mail. And we would probably want to parse information out of that. That's what most of these do. Full form of XML. So let's just, uh, we actually will double check super quickly. So let's just go XML. And I'm pretty sure it was back on that other thing. Extensible markup language is the answer there. So let's take the win. Taking that W, submit. Okay. And is it uh, compulsory to have XML prologue in XML documents? Uh, I think the answer to that is going to be no. Let's go in here. Okay. We're good there. Can we validate XML documents against a schema? So this is a really good one here. So XML schema. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there are different schemas. And so this is an example. Like here's 
an XML schema. So you can create one of these. These are XSD documents. And the code that you use in your XML file has to match this document. And we do agree that we can do that. And then how can we specify XML version and encoding in an XML document? This is, uh, so this said earlier that this was not required, but it was recommended. And that's how we got this one right. Uh, DTD, document type definition. So we want to define a new element. Is going to be this one, I believe. I'll tell you what, I'm not a fan of XML. I am a fan of JSON, though. Okay, so a root is where we would use the doc type. Right. 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 And how, how do you define a new entity? Let's try it. Let's go E-N-T-I-T-Y. Okay. Well, where was that actually at though in here? Well, obviously we know how we could go look that up. We could just search for it on Google and we'd probably find something that comes back. Okay, so let's look here at what we've got. Now we see some XXE payload and see how they're working. The first payload is simple. Entity name feast with a user info that has Falcon and then name. All right, so we can use XXE. Does anybody remember what XXE stands for? To read some file from the system by defining an entity and having it using this system word. If we use this payload, then a website, okay, so there we go, back to Etsy and then password, which we've been doing. Try the payload mentioned in the description on the website. The next one here is this, okay, let's see some payloads in action. The payload I'll be using is the one we saw in the previous task. We'll see how the website would look if we try to use the payload for displaying the name. On the left side, we can see the burp request that was sent with the URL encoded payload. And on the right, we can see the payload was able to successfully display the name. What's the name of the user in Etsy password? Falcon. <laughs> All right, Falcon, submit. I'll go ahead and hit these buttons. We'll get rid of these other screens. Where is Falcon's SSH key located? This is going to be the uh, SSH back over to our browser here. SSH. Whoop, whoop. We got it. We're getting there. So what are the first 18 characters for Falcon's private keys? All right, let's just do this. Let's take all of this. Let's copy this out. Let's head back over to our payload. Um, I think we still have burp going over here on the other screen. I'm sorry, on the other uh, instance here. So we still have burp. This is all good. We're just going to let this one rock and roll. And in our payload area, let's do a cat. And I have no clue. A cat on home falcon dot ssh slash id rsa. Let's submit this payload. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so it did pick it up right here. We can see XXE is saying cat home falcon. Let's forward that request. So we're going to let this go through. We hit forward. Woo! 